Hi guys, welcome to the second video in our kinetics unit. This video is going to be about concentration and rate laws, and after this video you should be able to write the rate law for a given reaction. You should be able to calculate the rate constant from a reaction, and you should be able to tell the order with respect to each reactants. So with concentration and rate, in general, the rate increases when reactant concentration is increased, and it decreases when concentration is decreased. Remember that the rate of reaction only depends on reactant concentration and not product concentration. Um, and the rates increase um, when concentration increases because remember that collisions must occur in order for a reaction to occur. So the higher the concentration, the more moles of reactant you have colliding, and the faster the rate. And then the opposite is true when you decrease the concentration. And so the main question for this video is how do we determine what effect the concentration of each reactant has on the rate? So we know what happens to the rate in general, but how do we determine that effect? Well, we always have to determine um, the effect experimentally. So in order to determine the rate law or to determine um, how concentration affects the rate, we have to run experiments. So we keep every concentration constant except for one of the reactants. And then we see what happens to the rate. Then we change a different reactant, keeping the others constant. And we do this until we've seen how each of the individual reactants affects the rate. So just an example of how concentration affects reaction rate. So if we consider this reaction, we have NH4+, plus, we have the ammonium ion plus the nitrite ion um, reacting in solution to give us nitrogen and water. And so with this, what we have to do is we have to measure the initial rates. So down here we have data for this type of experiment. And so in order to determine the effect on the rate, uh, we always use initial reaction rates. So we always use initial rate, that's the easiest to measure. Um, and what we have to do is, we have to run a reaction several times with different concentrations, and we look at the observed initial rate. So to determine the effect of concentration on rate, uh, we change, notice each of these trial numbers, uh, we change one of the concentrations, and then we determine or we measure the initial rate. So the initial rate, remember, is the instantaneous rate at times when t equals zero. Okay? So the initial rate is the instantaneous rate before anything begins. And then we just find this at um, various concentrations of each reactant. So looking at this, if you notice experiment 1 through 4, NH4 plus is what is changing, NO2 minus stays constant. So remember, we have to keep one of the reactants constant, the other one we can change. If you look at 5 through 8, notice NH4 plus stays constant and NO2 minus changes. So if we take a look at this, what we do is we simply look from one trial to another when one of the reactants change. So if we take a look at this table, if we look between experiments one and two, okay, you can pick any of them. It's up to you on which ones you want to pick. Typically you can pick the first two, and if you look from one to two, NH4 plus is what is changing. So going from one to two, the concentration doubles. Okay. NO2 minus stays the same, we need that to be true. That way we only have one variable changing. So this doubles. Notice that the rate doubles. Okay, so as the concentration of NH4 plus doubles, the rate doubles. So what this means is the rate is directly proportional to the NH4 plus concentration. So if NH4 plus doubles, the rate doubles. If you look from 1 to 3, okay, concentration quadruples, the rate quadruples. Okay, then if we look at NO2 minus, so they, it stays constant in 1 through 4, so let's take a look at 5 and 6. Okay, so 5 to 6, NH4 plus stays the same, NO2 minus doubles. Look at the rate, that also doubles. 
So what this means is the rate is also directly proportional to NO2 minus. So what we can do is we can write just a generic rate expression. So we have rate equals, well, we're not going to do equals first. We're going to do proportion. Okay, it's proportional. We always have K. That's a proportionality constant. So whenever we're looking at if something is proportional or not, you have to have K. And it's proportional to NH4+. Plus. And I'll just put NH because I can't write on this. And it's directly proportional to NO2 minus. So notice that it's directly proportional to NH4 plus. It's also directly proportional to NO2 minus. So okay, the result is the rate law, okay, which shows the relationship between rate and concentration, can be represented like this. So the rate equals K, which is a constant, times NH4 plus times NO2 minus. Okay, this is what is called the rate law. All we did is we said, well, if it's directly proportional to each of these, we can just write the expression. Now, there's also another way that we're going to look at reaction order from information like this in order to write the rate law. You always have to look at data. It always has to be determined experimentally. So the overall concentration dependence uh, is given in what is called a differential rate law. It's also just called the rate law. So if it just says write the rate law, it's the same as differential. Okay, for a general reaction, so general reaction remembers A plus B yields C plus D. Um, the general reaction, uh, the rate law is going to be K, which is a constant, times A to the M times B to the N. K is the rate constant. So K actually has a name. Um, K is called the rate constant. Um, and notice in this rate law, all we have are the reactant concentrations. And that's because the rate law shows the rate relationship between uh, reaction rate and reactant concentrations. Um, so only the reactant concentrations are given in the rate law. Um, with the rate constant, um, it's specific to each reaction, so the rate constant will not be the same um, for every reaction. It will be different because it's specific for each, react for each reaction and um, it is temperature dependent. So if temperature changes, K will also change, and we'll talk more about that in 14.5. But once we've determined the rate law and the rate constant, we can actually use these to calculate uh, reaction rates under any set of conditions. So once we have the rate law and once we know the rate constant, we can be given any set of concentrations and we can find that rate. So finding the rate law is just the first step in order for us to determine um, the initial rate at any set of conditions. So these exponents in the rate law, right here in this rate law we have M and N exponents. Um, these are called the reaction orders. What this means is this is the order with respect to each reactant. Um, we can say the rate is M order with respect to A, it's N order with respect to B. We commonly encounter reaction orders of 0, 1, or 2. So it would be 0 order, 1st order, or 2nd order. We're going to look at how to determine that as well. But um, fractional or negative values are possible. Now, we're probably not going to get into that much at all. Uh, we're really going to look at zero, first, or second order, but it is good to know that you could potentially have fractions or negative values um, if possible. So the overall reaction order okay, is simply the sum of reaction orders. So the overall order of reaction would be M plus N plus everything else. So if we actually go back to this rate law, and go back a few slides. Let's look at this rate law down here. Okay, the order is the exponent up here. Well, if there's no exponent, it can be assumed to be one. So what we can say here is this rate is first order with respect to the ammonium ion, and it's first order with respect to the nitrite ion, okay, because the exponents are one. And then the overall reaction order, if both is one, then the 
overall reaction order would be 1 plus 1, which is 2. So again, reaction orders must be determined experimentally. Um, they do not necessarily correspond to the coefficients in a balanced equation. Now they can, and sometimes they do, but that is not how you determine reaction order. You have to determine it experimentally. Okay, so what we can actually do is we can actually use the initial rates and the concentrations to determine the rate laws. Now, this is more of an algorithmic approach. Um, so we can say that um, we <clears throat> first we have to look at the changing concentration, and then we can say a reaction is nth order if multiplying the concentration by x causes a certain increase. Now, this is getting very technical. I think it's easier just to look at the data um, and kind of work your way through it. So what I mean by that is, for our example, if you look at your data table, okay, the experimental data, concentration was doubled. Okay, So concentration was doubled, rate was doubled. That's first order. Okay, um, So looking back at, at this algorithmic approach, Okay, so the increase in concentration, it was 2. Okay, it was doubled. So the rate was also doubled. So that's 2 to the first power. Okay, it's first order. Um, a way to remember is if it's directly proportional, it's first order. Um, if you change the concentration and rate didn't change at all, that's zero order. If you doubled the concentration and the rate quadrupled, that's second order. Okay, so... Um, it's usually easier just to look at the table. Some people like this algorithmic approach. For some people, they say, I just want to skip that. I don't want to have to worry about this. That's fine, too. Okay, so as I said, the reaction in our example, we had this rate law. Um, the reaction is said to be first order with respect to the ammonium ion, first order with respect to the nitrite ion, and second order overall, 1 plus 1. All right, so what this means is if the NH4 plus concentration is changed while NO2 minus is constant, rate should double. Right? If this is doubled, this will double. If NH4 plus is held constant and NO2 minus is tripled, rate should triple. Okay? Directly proportional. So some most common scenarios. Um, what we can do is we can just look at how the concentration um, affects the rate. So it's zero order if you change the concentration and the rate doesn't change. It's first order if you change the concentration and that's the exact same as the change in rate. So right, concentration is doubled, rate is doubled. It's second order if the change in concentration um, is equal to the square of that change. Right. So if you double concentration, two squared rate would be increased four times. If you triple the concentration, it would the rate would be nine times greater. Right? So this, I think, is the easier approach as you look at determining the uh, reaction order. So if we just take a look at this table, um, if we double the concentration, rate doesn't change, it's zero order. If we double the concentration, rate is doubled. Okay, directly proportional, that's first order. If we double the concentration, rate quadruples. Okay, notice this is directly proportional to the square. That's second order. Okay, so then if we triple the concentration, rate doesn't change, zero order. If you triple it, the rate triples, that's first. If you triple and then the rate is multiplied by nine, um, it's second order. Okay, so Remember, zero order is independent of rate. Okay, which means if you wrote the rate con or the rate expression, it would be rate equals k, because you wouldn't have any reactants there. Um, if it's first order, rate is directly proportional to concentration. You'd have rate equals k times the concentration of the reactant. If it was second order, rate's directly proportional to the square, so you'd have rate equals k times the concentration squared. Okay, so those are your three possible rate laws that you could have. So then we're going to look at the units for our rate constant. So once we have the rate law and um, 
we have initial sets of, of data from that table, we can calculate the rate constant. And the units of the rate constant depend on your reaction order. If it's second order overall, okay, we have rate, which is rate's always molar per second. Okay, so we have molar per second equals K times molarity times molarity. Okay, if we rearrange this to solve for K, we find that it is per molar per second. So what this means is this is one over molar times seconds on the bottom. Okay, if it's first order, rate is equal to K times the concentration. Again, if we rearrange, we find that it is molar per second divided by molar. Our constants are simply per second, our unit for constant. Now, what if it's zero order? Well, if it's zero order, we're not going to have anything over here. Rate is equal to K. So your units for K are simply going to be molar per second. If you can never remember, just plug in what you know. Rate is always molar per second. Concentration is always molarity. Just cancel your units out. Okay, so again, note that the rate, not the rate constant, depends on concentration. So your initial reaction rate depends on concentration. The rate constant is affected by temperature and by a catalyst. Now we'll talk more about how a catalyst affects that later. The biggest thing right now is that rate constant is affected by temperature. So rate constants are also important uh, because if chemists want to compare reactions, uh, the quantity of the rate constant um, is of interest to them. And what I mean by the quantity of the rate constant is the value of the constant. Um, a good general rule you might want to write down is that a large value of K so a large value of K, really anything that's 10 to the 9th or higher is considered a fast reaction. Um, a small K, anything that's 10 or lower, um, so any number that's below 10, is considered a slow reaction. So a very, very large rate constant means it's a very fast reaction. Um, a small value of K is a slow reaction, and then anything in between is just kind of a moderate reaction. Okay, and then I want you to try this first example um, on your own. So now that you're done getting the content, I want you to try this first example, um, and you're given the balanced equation, and you're given the rate law itself. Um, you are just asked to find the individual reaction orders and the overall reaction order. So I want you to try this, give the individual reaction orders uh, as well as the overall, um, and then this will be what we start class with.